What is going on, YouTube? Hopefully, you guys are having a great day out there. Wanted to come back here on the channel and give you an update on our trading card strategy that my brother and I talked about. We were at our secret location. We we're out there in the woods, and we were discussing our buying and selling strategy. Well, over the last week, I've really implemented, and really over the last two weeks. And so I'm going to walk you through literally every single card, or not every single card, but most of the cards that I've bought over the last week for my strategy where I'm focusing on these $100 cards, $110 cards, and I'll show you what I paid for them, exactly what I paid for them, show you the comps, and show you about what I would expect to get out of that. So I'll talk about all that here in a moment. The other thing that I want to do is right in the beginning of today's show, I want to talk a little bit about modern basketball because there's a lot of talking here in the hobby about how modern basketball is trending down. And so you might wonder, is that something where I'm going to come in there and buy the dip? Am I buying the dip on Luca? Am I buying the dip on Zion? Am I buying the dip on anybody here in especially modern basketball since the season is practically over for the majority of the league? Yes, you have some players still in it and it's still exciting to watch and there might be some card movement there, but I'm not trying to buy at the top, okay? And I'm not trying to gamble that uh, buy a card and gamble that they go to the Western Conference Finals and then the Finals and then win. That strategy doesn't normally pay off. And so so buying the dip, it's not that bad of an idea. You buy in the off season. That is a strategy we've talked about a lot here on the show. And so we'll talk about it here in the beginning of the show. We'll reference Luca and Zion since I think they're the kind of bellwether. If their cards are going down, probably everybody else's RJ Barrett's, uh, Kobe White, uh, Ja Morant. All of them are going to come down, not necessarily in lockstep with these players, but they're going to come down with them. And so we'll talk about Luca here to start off with. His Prism PSA 10 rookie card number 280. Selling for about 800. I think a couple sold yesterday in that 750 range. I want to say this was like easily a $1,000 card. This card might have been closer to $2,000 over the last 12 months or so. And it has come down quite a bit. I mean, some of it is related to this is not a particularly rare card. You also have the PSA backlog being unloaded. And I can imagine there's a ton of these Lucas sitting over there. And so people are liquidating them to get a little cash out. Now, what you want to think about when you're thinking about buying a modern player and you want to quote unquote invest or want the card to appreciate what you got to remember. And I don't think enough people talk about this is first of all, a certain amount of performance is already priced into the card. Okay, Luca's already considered a top NBA player. Many consider him an MVP candidate. Many think the Mavericks should be like in the Western Conference Finals, if not the finals, as soon as next season. Like a lot of Mavericks fans thought it would happen this season. They thought he would win the MVP this season. That is already priced into his cards. Okay, you can go look at Giannis values. The win, the minute Giannis Antetokounmpo started winning MVPs, his cards actually started going down, okay? Some of that is already priced into the card. How much with Luca? I don't know, but his great perf his great performance, great scoring, great assists, triple doubles, that is already priced in the card. So he's going to have to do something next year over and above what's already kind of priced into the card. One thing that he could do that he hasn't done already is win some ball games. And I think the the popular opinion about Luca is he's going to need some help on his team. And it is going to be difficult for the Mavericks to add some help. First of all, they've got some key free agents like Tim Hardaway and some others that are up and even JJ Redick who I think has uh, I think the team has an option on him. But it's going to be difficult. And I've heard some other people say, "Well, they'll trade Porzingis." Believe me, it's not that easy. It's not going to be easy trading a guy with a max contract whose stock has fallen as far as Porzingis. Now, there are some good free agents, Chris Paul, Kawhi Leonard, Mike Conley, Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan. This is easily your top 5 free agents right here. Now, whether or not any of these guys trade teams, I'm not sure why any of them would want to go to Dallas is another thing that you need to think about. Okay, the other thing that you need to think about is what if Chris Paul joins Dallas Mavericks? What do you think is going to happen to Luka's stats and Luka's opportunity to touch the ball every play? It's going to go down, okay? his I think his wins would go way up, and I think the Dallas Mavericks uh, odds of winning a championship would go up tremendously if they signed a point guard like Conley or Lowry or even like Kawhi Leonard. But what would happen to Luka's stats? They would probably go down. And so that's one thing that you want to think about. The other thing that you need to worry about a little bit is Kristaps Porzingis has actually been vocal. The fact that Luka 
Dante actually dominates the ball. Okay. And that has Kristaps Porzingis stock absolutely tanking. Okay. Fans are just giving this guy all kinds of heat. Okay. And he's blaming it on Luca. Okay. So you better believe that these other players on this free agent list, do they really want to go sign in Dallas, especially for less money? None of them are going to sign in Dallas for less money and then watch Luca hold the ball for 18 seconds out of the 24 second shot clock. None of these guys are going to want to do that. Okay. They all have egos. They all want the ball. They all want money. Okay. So none of them are going to go sign for less to go watch Luca jack up a bunch of threes. Okay. So I don't think that's going to necessarily happen. They're not going to get a lot of help. You're going to have to run this back with the Mavericks with Chris Stapps Porzingis and maybe a worse team because if Tim Hardaway Jr. bounces, some of the other role player bounces, you're going to have to run it back with a worse team or the same team. Now that will be good for Luca's stats. I think Luca's stats next year outside of them signing some kind of point guard or some kind of impact player. I think his stats will be fantastic next year. But do you really want to sit on this card for $800 all the way this time next year, right? Okay, we're going to have to wait all the way into the playoffs because everybody's already priced into these cards. Luca's great scoring, MVP candidate, one of the best players in the league, one of the more entertaining players to watch. That is all priced into his cards, okay? So he's either going to have to win or really do some fantastic things next year. And in my opinion, you could take this 800 and flip it five, six, seven times. And even if you're only only earning 5 to 10% on your money each time you flipped it, probably would make more money than just kind of holding and hoping that this card would eventually appreciate going into next year. And just the team dynamics on the Mavs, don't really set up for a team that's well positioned to make a move next year. Now, the other guy, I thought this was interesting. So Zion obviously was a rookie the year after 2019, 2020. His card, Prism PSA 10, number 248. So those are trading for about as half as much as Lucas. So I think, you know, Zion's an interesting player and the Pelicans are in a completely different spot than the Mavericks are. They didn't make the playoffs. I think they were in the playoff game or they they were in the running to potentially make the playoffs, but they just didn't get it done. So the upside for Zion could potentially be getting the Pelicans into the playoffs. The Pelicans actually have a really nice roster as well. Him and Ingram are a legitimate two tandem play, two tandem scoring. If they can get some defense and maybe get a point guard on that team that can really distribute the ball. I think the Pelicans, they're not going to go to the Western Conference Finals next year unless they sign someone like Chris Paul or, or maybe even a Kyle Lowry. But this is an interesting spot. I, am I buying the dip on Zion? No, I'm going to wait. to. There's no catalyst that's going to send Zion cards or even Luka cards any higher in the next four to eight weeks, right? You got NFL starting up pretty soon. That's going to suck up a lot of air in the hobby. You've got new NBA rookies coming. The NBA draft will be at some point. Okay, so you have new sets. You also got the tail end of uh, LaMelo Ball set. A lot of good NBA sets come out uh, towards the end or after the season. And so that'll suck up a lot of air in the hobby. And you also got the stretch run of baseball where you start. I don't know how the call up are working this year with baseball if it's the same as as previous years pre-covid years well you'll have september call-ups with baseball where you start getting a lot of these rookies you also have seen it throughout the year you get baseball guys with injuries and so new guys get up and so that takes a little air out of the hobby i just wait on this one and you also got the backlog still being unwound over at psa i'd wait to see on this one this would be an interesting one i don't know if i'd want to step in here and buy his base one uh base psa 10 or you shoot for maybe a silver nine if you're in this you know price range or whatever but Zion might be a guy I'd be interested in a little bit next year I just think his upside and his team's upside it's already out of floor okay they didn't make the playoffs so if they can make the playoffs maybe add a piece or two Zion is certainly obviously all these players have got to stay healthy and we'll see what happens there now moving on to the meat of the video I want to walk you through exactly what I've bought over the last week talk about what I was thinking when I bought these cards 
and maybe it'll help you if you want to buy and sell cards as well. The first thing that I want to say, though, is we're not looking for to hit home runs over here. We're not looking to be Barry Bonds or Mark McGuire or, uh, you know, Fernando Tatis. We're not trying to hit jacks and flip the bat over here. OK, in my opinion, that's not a consistent strategy if you want to build a long term business or even a quote unquote investor. I don't think trying to hit home runs, trying to double money, triple your money all the time. That doesn't happen very much, okay? Sports cards are seasonal. Demand for them is seasonal, and it kind of wanes and goes. What we're trying to do over here is build a consistent business where you're consistently trying to make 10 to 20%. Sure, there'll be times maybe you make a little bit more on a sale of a card, sometimes less. Sometimes you might even lose money on a card, okay? But for the most part, trying to make 10 to 20% on our money. So here's these Michael Jordan 91 Skybox. This is a lot of five PSA nines. I picked these up for, you call this about 140 after you add tax, maybe closer to 150 after you add tax. So you're in these for about $30 each. I literally just sold one this week, just one for $50 plus a little bit of shipping. So I, I, I ran the eBay calculator, probably going to make eight to $10 on these. So yeah, you're going to make on the, at best, you're going to make $50, but that's 30% margin on that one. So I'm excited about this one. The other thing I can do is I can just, if I want to, I can use the a kind of a stock image, but I'll more than likely um, scan these new photos in there, but it's just a quick relist put a photo up there, maybe put a five quantity in one listing and boom, you're done. You're on to the next one. Now, this was a really good value here. So I've got these LeBron Jam. Obviously the Lakers got bounced. And so I've noticed a slight softening in LeBron James cards. And so I like that. Okay. Especially from an international perspective, if you're not, if you're selling basketball cards and you don't not in the global shipping program or whatever it is to send outside the U S you're missing out on a ton of sales. Uh, I would say, I, I don't know the percentage off my head, but it's well north of 20% of our sales actually go to inter, the international market. They love LeBron. They love Zion. They love Luca. They love all these ba basketball players around the world. LeBron in particularly Jordan as well, obviously goes without saying. So I got this lot of four PSA 10. These are gem mints, baby. And I got four of them for a hundred bucks. If you add in tax and all that, you're in these for 125. You're in these for about $30 each. These sell not regularly, but you can get $50 a card out of these. So after your fees and stuff, again, you're making eight to $10 a card on this one. You're making pretty good profit there. Now on to the vintage stuff that I've been focusing on. So I've been focusing on that card that cost between 50 and 100 sometimes upwards of two as you see here over 200 dollars per card where i can mark it up a little bit make a little bit of money but what i'm looking for are not your common zion i mean these zions sell every single day every day you're competing with a new price and if the price drops on you you got to drop your price or it's not going to sell same with the lucas you know if you're sitting here at 1200 bucks on your luca you might be holding it for the next year or so Whereas when you look at these vintage cards, they don't sell very much, okay? And there's not very many of them listed. So here's a Roberto Clemente, 1963. The couple reasons why I loved this auction. First of all, notice the card number is 540. And what does he have up here? 390, okay? So sometimes, and also on the card, it says Bob Clemente, and he only put Roberto Clemente up here. Obviously, he's known more for, to more fans as Roberto, but a lot of his older cards actually have Bob Clemente on there. So he didn't get the name right, and he has the card number right. So you might imagine, got a pretty good deal on this card. Okay, you notice, so I'm using PWCC. You can use whatever you want. I just think this is kind of one of the cleaner ways. To, this might not be complete data, but it gives you enough when you're making these decisions. You don't need to spend, I, I don't have hours and hours to spend researching this stuff. And so look at this. One sold for 325, 338, 249, 306. Notice that they don't sell very often. Okay, so here's back in January and May. So this is like six, seven months right here. Only five of these cards have sold, at least according to this data. And I'm only looking at PSA fives. Obviously, six, seven, eights, and fours and threes sell for a lot. But 
you know, a lot of these cards have sold. Now, this was a nice price. Obviously, someone did a fixed price at 204. That was way too low. But, you know, notice how these cards have trended up, too. What I like about PWCC is you can come down here and look in 2019. This is like a $100 card, $150 card. You could get 200 That's why I didn't mind paying 222 for it because it looks like that's about a floor for it, at least over the last six months. And I can potentially get upwards of $300, maybe even $300 and some change for this card. So I'm excited about that. Even after your fees at $300 even, you're making pretty good money there. And in my opinion, not taking a ton of risk, okay? This guy is resting in peace. His baseball career is over. And there's not a lot of these cards being pulled out of packs or sitting there ungraded. The good ones have been graded. I also like that this one looked, it's not centered perfectly. It's not great centering, but it's not bad. Sometimes you see these PSA 5s and the centering is really bad and that turns off some collectors. It's not terrible on this card, but I like that the listing was had some errors in it. And I like that just the last two auctions, 338 and 325, and I picked it up for $100 under that. I'll be able to make some money on that card for sure. Next one I picked up with this Ed Matthews. It's a PSA 7. Nothing wrong with the listings. Photo's a little blurry, but I got it for $177. We'll check the comps on this one. So you see here, here's the one I got here at $177. Take a look. The last couple ones have sold for $275, $260. Look at this one for $390. Did he autograph it? No, he didn't even autograph it. 230. Notice I got the lowest price. Here's one that sold for almost the exact same price I got. That was back in September. So again, these these are not quick flips. If you need money fast, go to Uber and drive. Go to DoorDash and drive. Go get a job if you need money fast. Okay. These are not going to be quick flips. Only one or two of these cards sell a month. But if you price it right and you buy it for the right price, when you do sell it, you're going to make some money. Okay. I'm going to probably be able to get two and a half easy out of this card because you notice the last two sales are two and a half. And even when you stretch back on this one, like we're going back all the way to 2019, this was still a $180, $190 card, sometimes a little bit less, but 177, I think is kind of the floor on this one. And I think I can catch somebody either building a set or for some sentimental reason wants to to get into this card. I think I can get two and a half, maybe even upwards of 300 bucks on that one if I'm lucky. So excited about that one. Next card is a Willie McCovey. I picked this one up for $102. We'll take a look here and take a look. Here's mine. I didn't get a screaming hot deal in this one. Okay, you'll see one back in June sold for $86. There's no qualifiers on that one. But what you will see is sometimes you do get these pops. I think Willie McCovey didn't pass away too long ago. And so it could be that you're getting a little bit of a pop there. But I don't mind being in this card for 100 because as you stretch back, you see that very little of the time and even into last year, you saw this card trade for under a hundred, but I like this one. It's not going to be a quick seller. It's not going to be a big money maker. I'm probably only going to look to get 120 out of it, 130 out of it, make my 20%, maybe even 15% and move on to the next card. But for hundred bucks, make a little bit of money on that one. Now, another Roberto Clemente card. Again, same thing here. The, the auction has Roberto Clemente, but the card says Bob Clemente. Okay. He got the number right. This is a PSA 6, 1967 tops. I paid $192 for this one. So here's what I bought right here. Notice though, the last couple auctions, we had one for 222. You had one all the way up at 300 bucks. He had some trade a little bit lower in May, but this is a card that bounces around a little bit. Okay. You see this occasionally you can get them for 150, which is lower than what I paid. But sometimes these things stretch out all the way to 300 bucks, 240 bucks. And so that's where I'm looking with this one. Again, not looking to make a ton of money on this one. I'll tell you what, I'm probably going to price this one at 275 and I'll gladly take 250 or so or somewhere in that range 
make a couple bucks, move on to the next card. Now, I liked this auction. Okay, so this guy, really bad picture. That's a pretty bad picture. The card's like cut off. It looks like it's on his bathroom or his kitchen. A nice granite underneath there. But so not a great title. Okay, things you can tell he probably did this on his phone. Didn't put the card number in there. Got an old school PSA holder. The card is nicely centered. That's what I liked about this one. Yeah, it's top to bottom or side to side, however you want to look at it. Not perfect, but look, this isn't an eight. This isn't an a nine. I would have had to pay way more if I wanted that, but it's not bad centering. Okay. And the card overall doesn't look too bad. It's off corner up there in the right, but I paid 111 bucks for it. Take a look at this. Some of them, sometimes they sell for two bills, 140, 150. I'm probably going to be in that range when I get rid of this one, but they can go as high as 170. I mean, if you get lucky, you can get one kind of low that has no qualifiers on that one. But uh, look, you know, right in there, I picked it up, I think for a good price. You get a good, this is why I like these auctions that have kind of a bad photo, bad title. I think with a good photo and a good title, I can make 20, 30% on that one right there. Now, the next one, sticking with the Yankees, I got this 1966 Roger Maris PSA 7. Picked this up for 118 and some change. The comps on this one bounce around a little bit. Not going to make a ton of money on this one, but you see here, occasionally they tick up to 150, 150. Uh, this was a pretty cheap card last year. So that's the other thing that I look for. You're taking a little bit of a risk. But what I'm seeing is this card is trending up, okay? 80, 90, 90, then we get into 100, mid hundreds. This card is starting to trend up. Now, it's not gonna go to the moon. It's not gonna go to three, $400 overnight, but I'm looking for a card in some cases that is trending up. Roger Maris, obviously just a classic player. What I liked about this one, the centering's off top to bottom, but it's not bad, okay? It's not bad. I, I think collectors collectors can like whatever they want, but it's the side-to-side -side centering that when that's off, the card really looks bad. The top to bottom's not bad. I prefer it being off on the bottom. Doesn't look as bad. This one's uh, off-centered on the top, but not bad. And I think a Yankees fan or a Roger Maris fan would like to add this to a collection. Again, I'll probably look, I want to get in the high end of these comps. So I'm going to hold, I'm probably going to be sitting on this card for a while, probably eight months, maybe even, maybe even longer than that. Okay. But I'll look to get that 150, 160 on it and make a couple bucks. Now, Moving on to Hank Aaron. This is a 1962 Tops graded four. Centering again, side to side, not bad. Top to bottom, it's really bad. And that's probably what threw the grade off. Although the corners don't look great, the edges, it's not a great condition card. But look what I paid. 106 bucks for a Hank Aaron card. 1962 Tops. Hank Aaron. Take a look at these comps. So here I am at 106. One sold for 175, 172, 175, 165, 239. I'd love to get that much. 149. Look at this. You got to go all the way back to February to find a price that's lower than wine. I even played lower than that. They bear, they rarely, okay, here's back in January. Is that a qualifier? No. So back in January, you saw one sold for 73. It could be that low feedback, negative feedback, whatever it is. But look, I mean, you've got some comps as high upwards of 200 bucks on this one. So I really like this one at 106. I tell you what, there's a lot of room here. I'll probably price this one high. I'll probably be at 199 on this one and I'll gladly take 175, 165, somewhere in that range, even after fees, you're going to do pretty well on a card like that. Next card that I picked up was this... Uh, Ernie Broglio, I'm not particularly familiar with him, but this is a PSA 8. Look at how strong the centering is on this card. I love that. And this is a 1963 card. It's actually pretty tough to find these in this kind of condition. Perfect, like almost perfectly centered. Love this card. The photo's not great, okay? That's actually a better photo than the one he had here. This is kind of grainy and kind of blurred out. He should have had this photo at least on the front. So I love that the photo kind of sucked on it. I got it for 115. Let's take a look at the comps on this one. So here I am at 115. That was me. Look, 175, 262, 170, 143. This is a card that's been trending up as well. But even when you go back, look at 2018. It's a $150 card. 2018, $230 card. 
2018, this was 170 bucks and I literally just got it for 115. Okay. There's not a comp on here much lower than that. Here's one from, wow, PWCC really whiffed on that one, 96 bucks, but all the other ones are pretty high. So I'll be holding on to this one. These cards don't come up for sale very much. Okay. You see just three of them have sold this year and in 2020, only three have sold in 2020. They don't sell very often. But I'll be able to make some money on this one, mark it up a little bit, and hopefully get, I think I want at least $150, $175 for this car. I'd love to get $262. I won't wait for that to happen, but we'll see what happens. Now, the next card, easily the oldest card that I bought was this T206 Huey Jennings, and they say it's a rookie card. There's two variations. One, I think he has two hands up. This has just one hand showing. I paid $165 for this one. Let's check out the con. I, I just love these old cards. You don't see them very often. And people don't care who's on, you know, like, you know, and what happens too is you have a T206 auction of like a really ma major player, one of these super rare cards, and it'll go for a record. It just kind of drives up the price on all these other ones. And so what did I pay? I paid to 165 for this one. Look at the last one. Sold for 249 Look at this one. Okay, so this one's two hands up. So that's not the card I have. I have this one right here, PSA 2, same condition, no qualifiers. $419. Hello. That feels good. Here's what a PSA six sells for 1800 bucks. Here's another one. These things can bounce around. Okay. This one sold for 155. Here's one's for 199. Again, this is back into 2020. Here's one for 249, 143. You're going to have to be patient on something like this, but I'm going to price this one high because if you want this card, there's probably not that many for sale. So I'm going to want $200 plus probably 250 at 165. I'm going to want probably 250 260 plus on this one i'm gonna make some good money once i eventually sell that card so i'm excited about this one last card of the day raleigh fingers okay psa 9 tops this was uh, just fantastic condition there's a little print spot i thought on this one somewhere maybe not psa 9 just solid condition you don't see cards like this that often in this condition paid up heavily for this one 207 dollars but what i want to show you is occasionally these things can pop so here's me at 207 this card is sold for 260 look at though back at, they don't sell very often back in december a couple have sold this is why i bought it because look at the trend on this one okay back last year this was like a hundred dollar card, eighty dollar card, and it just continues to trend up. So I paid up for this one, not looking to make a lot of money on this one, but I'm gonna ask a lot because you don't see PSA nine of these cards for sale very often. In fact, I'm probably the only one that's gonna have it for sale, uh, at least on a public marketplace. And so I like this type of card. I'm probably gonna look to take home at least 250 to 60 on this one. That's why I probably probably looking to get 300, 280 to 300 on that one. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. We'll be back with more. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out down below. Hopefully you guys have a great day. Good luck with your collections.